Hi, my name is Doug Hunsaker, and I'm excited that you want to join me for this course on airfoil analysis. Now, Plutarch said, the mind is not a vessel to be filled, but a fire to be kindled. And I hope that through this course, you light a fire in your mind here about what can be done with airfoil design uh, in the future. So uh, this course really is about airfoil analysis. We will get into a little bit of design right at the end. But um, let me just give you an overview kind of what we're going to cover. Now, an airfoil, uh, if you look at, uh, at any aircraft, uh, it basically has a wing, right, or, or several wings. And uh, these wings um, we're all very familiar with. But if you were to take a cross-section of this wing, so let's just say if I were to, to cut this wing, uh, then what would happen is uh, I'd get a shape that looks something like a teardrop. Uh, and this is what we call an airfoil section. Now, uh, back in the early days of aerodynamics, they actually called complete wings aerofoils, or some uh, sometimes in uh, in uh, like uh, English in the English language, the the British English, uh, they they still use airfoil to mean a complete wing. But we're going to use the word to mean an airfoil section, meaning a two dimensional cross section of the swing that that looks kind of like a teardrop. And uh, you actually get these same sections in uh, propellers, so you can you can do the same thing with a with a propeller. You can you can cut a cross section there and look at that, and it's also an airfoil shape. Same with uh, the the blades on rotorcraft, such as helicopters or drones. Uh, you know, have these little propellers or large propellers. Anyway, you take any of those. Those are basically large rotating wings, and if you uh, take the cross section of that, and cut it, and look at what that that uh, cross-sectional area looks like, um, you get this two-dimensional airfoil. And this this dates back to the early days of aerodynamics. This is one of the first things that they studied was, you know, what's the two-dimensional shape here that's going to be really efficient uh, at taking flow? And basically, the point of the airfoil is to bend the flow. So the, the flow is going to come in from some angle here, uh, and then that, that airfoil is going to bend that flow and send it off in a different direction and 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 by doing that uh, we're going to create some forces on here so uh, for example we'll we'll create lift and um, and then there's also unfortunately going to be some uh, some drag uh, force also created by this airfoil um, it usually drag is a bad thing so usually we're trying to generate lift and trying to minimize drag so anyway we're gonna walk through the process of you know the analysis if I were given some airfoil geometry, how would I analyze uh, what kinds of properties this airfoil would give me? You know, how much lift would it produce at different operating conditions or how much drag? Uh, and also with the airfoil, um, uh, we're not only going to have these forces, lift and drag, but we're also going to have, again, what's called a moment. Uh, this is called the pitching moment. We usually use a little m to signify that. Uh, and so we'll be able to predict, you know, what's the torque that this propeller also uh, torque or moment that is produced uh, when the flow moves over this airfoil. So a few things we're going to be covering here. Uh, number one, geometry. So how do we define the geometry of an airfoil? You know, there's a very traditional way of doing it. There are very common airfoil geometries out there, and we'll talk about some of those. Uh, so geometry is the first thing. And then we're going to talk about three different methods for predicting the aerodynamics of that airfoil. So I'm just going to write down here three methods for predicting the aerodynamic. And, and the, the first method is something that dates back over 100 years. Uh, it's called thin airfoil theory. Uh, the second method is, uh, is a little bit uh, higher fidelity um, thin airfoil theory, I, I should say real quick, um, like I said, it was developed long before computers were developed. And so basically they used what they understood about fluid dynamics and the geometry of the airfoil to make some approximations of how the aerodynamics might look on this. And it turns out the thin airfoil theory is actually really quite accurate. It's really quite amazing uh, for producing, for predicting the lift and the pitching moment that come off this. Now we can't predict the drag using that method, but we can predict lift and pitching moment. It turns out it, it's surprisingly accurate. Um, then we're gonna dig into what's called the vortex panel method. And, uh, and this is a computer-based code uh, or algorithm that can be used to predict the aerodynamics. 
but it still does not predict drag, okay? So it predicts lift and pitching moment, um, but does not predict drag in its uh, computer algorithm. Uh, I've got some sample code that I'll give you, um, and uh, but we'll also walk through the algorithm and how to write your own code, how to develop your own code. Um, and then finally, we're gonna look at one last method called, um, and there's a very famous uh, code out there called XFOIL. So I'm just gonna write that here, XFOIL, which is basically a vortex panel method. So it's, a, I'm gonna say VPM uh, plus uh, some viscous effects that, uh, that uh, allow us to predict the drag in addition to the lift and pitching moment. XFOIL is very widely used, and so we'll talk about how to use it, um, give you some example cases and things, so hopefully you'll feel comfortable using that tool uh, when you wrap up this course. And then finally, last two more things that we're going to talk about are flaps. So, so we understand the aerodynamics of flaps. So basically a flap is if I took part of this airfoil and hinged it, the back portion of it, uh, you know, you're you're used to seeing flaps on uh, on aircraft, and so that's a hinged portion that can move up and down. And we're going to talk about what kind of effect that has on the aerodynamics. And then finally, uh, the last thing we'll cover is are some design um, methods. Uh, so the first uh, part of this class is all about analysis. You know, if I gave you a geometry, could you predict uh, what the aerodynamics look like? for this particular geometry and flap setting. But then uh, the last bullet point here, design, what if I have a particular design or performance that I'm looking for out of an airfoil? Um, and we'll talk about some methods for approaching that. So again, thank you for joining this class. Uh, I really hope you enjoy this course on airfoil analysis.